Oliver, it's good to see you. And has this move persisted longer than you would have thought? Yeah, it, it really has. As you had alluded to from the start of the segment, corn, soybeans, and wheat have just been really on a tear from the beginning of the year after we get bullish catalysts after bullish catalysts after bullish catalysts. The first catalyst to start the year was obviously the bullish input costs, which we all know about. And then what really added fuel to the fire was the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Obviously, we all know by now that Russia and Ukraine account for about 30 percent of global wheat exports and about 20 percent of global corn exports. So those are the two markets that are most affected here with what's going on overseas. But I think wheat has probably run its course and maybe ran a little bit too far. What we're focusing on right here right now is the corn market as we enter that spring planting season. And, uh, and weather becomes a, a lot bigger of a factor going forward, which, as we know, in the Midwest uh, can be a coin flip from day to day. The most recent USDA report uh, that showed prospective plantings and how many acres of corn we're going to plant came in at 89 and a half million acres. That's about three million acres less than the average analyst estimate. So lower acres in corn is driving prices higher and higher and higher. We've tacked on about a dollar since that last USDA report. Let me ask you two questions you referred earlier to. We knew early in the year about, quote, higher input costs. What are those input costs that were higher and why? Fertilizer prices are just screaming higher. And we all know commodity prices as a whole have been screaming higher. But fertilizer prices for corn are the big one. And as I alluded to, the shift from corn acres is moving to soybean acres. So mm -hmm. we're seeing about 3 million acres less of corn shifted towards soybeans because soybeans require less input. So that's what's driving prices here in the corn market going forward. Now we're starting to get these weekly crop progress reports from right. the USDA as well. Yesterday's report showed us about 4% planted for the corn. It's about 2% below the five-year average or behind the five-year average pace. So nothing to get overly concerned about right here, right now. But looking at the 6 to 10 and further down uh, the road forecast, and, and if it continues to be cold and wet in the eastern corn belt and hot and dry in the western corn belt, we could see this market continue to rally over the next one to two months. Well, it's cold here today, I'll tell you, and it was wet last night. Let's talk a little bit about Ukraine. Um, how much wheat do your sources tell you that Ukraine is going to be able to grow? What percent of their normal crop are they going to be able to produce in wheat and or corn this year? Well, it's definitely been diminished and, and cut substantially. Now, when we're looking at the wheat market, a lot of countries that grow wheat use it for domestic purposes. And the United States grows a lot of wheat as well. And we use that uh, largely for our consumption. Uh, so it, I think the world has a plenty, plenty of supply of these grains. It's just more about logistics and moving it from place to place. And that's going to be the interesting thing to see, probably more so in the wheat market. But as I alluded to earlier, I think the wheat market probably got ahead of itself earlier in the year on the back of that uh, Russian invasion because the funds managed money were net short wheat. So there was a bit of a short squeeze there, which added fuel to the fire. And then you had the growing popularity of the wheat ETF, which prior to the invasion was trading anywhere from two to 300 shares a day. At the peak panic in the wheat market, we see we saw that ETF trade as many as 27 million shares a wow. day. Since then, we're trading about 5 million on average. But again, pre-invasion, that ETF was trading anywhere from 200 to 300,000 shares a day. Right. So, Oliver, let me ask you this before we let you go. Our, our last guest, from a macro point of view, said he thinks we're in the ninth inning of the commodities move in the market and only the second inning of a demand slowdown. What's your response to that? I would tend to agree. I think the commodities have had a heck of a year, year and a half, uh, moving to the upside and looking at the corn market, since that's what we've been talking about mostly here, is, is moving into that spring planting season and crop progression stage. If we get a good crop in the ground over the next one to two months, and weather looks to stabilize and be fairly normal, there's going to be plenty of corn coming down the pipeline in that new crop December contract. So we're keeping a very close eye on the December futures. That's where a lot of the momentum has shifted towards looking past some of these near-term hiccups. Yeah. That December contract is going to be a one to keep an eye on. All right. We'll leave it there. Oliver, thank you so much. We appreciate it.